Today we have with us Michael Michael, a hardware maintainer and director of product management at VMware. Michael, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, let's assume that you and I are stuck in an elevator and I suddenly ask you, what is Harbor? So please explain what is it. Hopefully you're not stuck for the, in the elevator for long, but Harbor essentially is an open source cloud native registry. Think of this as a repository where you can store and serve all of your cloud native assets, your container images, your home charts, um, and everything else you need to basically build cloud native applications. And then we can put in post on top of that some very good policy engines that allow you to enforce compliance, make sure your images that you're serving are free from vulnerabilities, and making sure that you have all the guardrails in place so an operator can manage this registry and deliver it to his developers uh, in a self-service way. Harbor came out of VMware China. Uh, so I'm also curious that what was the problem that the team saw at that point? Because there were a lot of projects that were doing something similar that you know you saw unique that Harbor was created. Yeah, so essentially um, the need there was, there wasn't really a good way to, for an enterprise to have a hosted registry that has all of the enterprise capabilities they were looking for, uh, while at the same time being able to have full control over the registry. Like a lot of the cloud providers have their own registry implementation. There's a Docker Hub out there. Um, or you can go and purchase something at a very expensive price point. But if you're looking for an open source solution that gives you end-to-end -end registry capabilities, like your developers can push images and pull images, and then your, um, uh, your operators can go and put a policy that says, hey, I want to allow this development team to create a project but not use more than a terabyte of storage. None of those solutions had that. So there was a need a business need here to develop a registry. And on top of that, we realized that it wasn't just us that had the same need. It was a lot of users and enterprises out there in the cloud native ecosystem. The project has been out for a while. Uh, and, and based on what you just told me, I'm curious what kind of community the project has built around itself and how the project has evolved. Because we'll also talk about the new release uh, version 2.20. But before that, I want to talk about the evolution of the project and the community around it. Project has, uh, has evolved uh, fairly well. Um, over the years, we uh, have increased our contributors and the contribution statistics uh, that CNCF is creating are showing that you know, we're growing our community. Uh, we now have maintainers in the project from multiple organizations, and there are actually three organizations that have more than one maintainer on the project. So it's kind of showing you that the, the ecosystem has picked up. We are adding more and more functionality into Harbor, and we're also making Harbor pluggable. So there are areas of Harbor where we're saying, hey, here's the default experience with Harbor, but if you want to extend that experience based on the, on the needs of your, of your users, go ahead and do that, and here's an easy way to implement an interface and do that. That has really increased the popularity of Harbor. That means two things. We can give you a batteries included version of Harbor from the community, and then we give you the option to extend that to fit the needs of your organization. And more importantly, if you have made investments in other tooling, you can plug and play Harbor in that. Uh, when I say other tooling, I mean things like CI CD systems. Um, you know, those systems are primarily driving the development uh, lifecycle. So for example, you go from source code to a container image to something that's stored in a registry like Harbor. The engine that drives that pipeline, that workflow, in a lot of ways is a CI CD engine. So how do you integrate Harbor well with such systems? We've made that a reality now, and that has made Harbor easier to put in an organization and get it adopted uh, with existing standards and existing investments. Now let's talk about the the, the recently announced 2.0. Talk about some of the core features, functionalities that you are excited about in this release. Yeah, absolutely. There's like three or four features that really, really excite me. Um, a long time coming is the support for OCI. Uh, the OCI is the Open Container Initiative and essentially is creating a standardized way to describe what an image looks like. And in Harbor 2.0, we are able to announce that we have full OCI support in Harbor. What does that mean for users? In previous releases of Harbor, you could only put into Harbor two types of artifacts, a container image and a home chart. Great, it satisfies a huge number of the use cases for customers, but it's not enough. In this new cloud native ecosystem, there's additional things 
that as a developer, as an operator, as a Kubernetes administrator, you might want to push into a repository like Harbor and have them also adopt a lot of the policy engine that Harbor provides. I'll give you a few examples. Cina bundles, the cloud native application uh, bundle. You could have OPA files. You could have Singularity and other OCI compliant files. So now Harbor tells you that, hey, you have any file type out there? If it's OCI compliant, you can push it to Harbor, you can pull it from Harbor, and then you can add things like quotas and retention policies and immutability policies and replication policies on top of that. The thing about that now, just by adding a few more types of supported artifacts into Harbor, those types immediately get to use the full benefits of Harbor in terms of our entire policy engine and the compliance that we offer to administrators of Harbor. I think this is one of the like first or earliest projects which are like, you know, from the history point of view, which are like OCI compliant. What does it mean for users? Because by being compliant, you have to be more strict about uh, what you can and cannot do. So can you talk about that? And also, uh, how does that also affect the existing users? Should they have to worry about something or it doesn't really matter? Yeah, existing users shouldn't have to worry about their full backwards compatibility compatibility, they can still push their container images, which are OCI compliant. Uh, and if you're using a home chart before, uh, you can still push it into charts museum. That is a key component of Harbor, but you can now also put a Helm chart as an OCI file. So for existing users, not much difference. Backwards compatibility, we still support them. The, the users that brought us here, we're not going to forget them. Uh, but what it means now is actually it's not more strict. It's a lot more open. If you're developing artifacts that are OCI compliant and they're following the standard way of describing an image and a standard way of actually executing an image at runtime, now Kubernetes is also OCI compliant at the runtime, then you're getting the benefits of both worlds. You get Harbor as the repository where you can store your images and you also get a runtime engine that's OCI compliant that could potentially execute them. Really great benefit here for the users. A couple of other features that Harbor 2.0 brings that are super, super exciting. The first one is the introduction of Trivi by Agua Security as the batteries included built-in scanner in Harbor. Previously, we used Claire as our built-in scanner. And with re the release of Harbor Code 1.10 that came out in December of 2019, we introduced what we call a pluggable framework. Think of this as a way that security vendors like Aqua and Anchor and Dusec can come in and create their own implementation of a security scanner to do static analysis on top of images that are deployed in Harbor. So we still included Claire as the building scanner, and then we added additional uh, extension points. Now we actually liked Trivi that much. Our community and our users love Trivi, its ability to enforce and do static analysis on top of multiple operating systems, on top of multiple application managers. Uh, it's a, it very well aligns with the vision that we have from a security standpoint in Harbor. And now we add a Trivi as the built-in scanner in Harbor. We ship with it now. Great, great achievement and kudos to the Aqua team for delivering Trivi as an open source project. Yeah, that's the another question I was going to ask. But uh, once again, I'll ask the same thing again, that what does it mean uh, for users who were using Claire? If you're using Claire before and you want to continue using Claire, by all means, we're going to continue updating Claire. Claire is already included in Harbor. There's no changes in experience. However, if you're thinking that Trivi is a better scanner for you. And by the way, you can use them side by side so you can compare the scanning results from each scanner. And if Trivi is a better option for you, we enable you to make that choice. Now, the way Harbor works is that we have a, a concept of multi-tenancy and we isolate a lot of the settings and the policy and the organization of images and on a per project basis. So what does that mean? You can actually go into Harbor and you can define a project and you can say for this project, I want Claire to be the built-in scanner. And then Claire will scan all your projects in that, um, all the files in that project. And you can set up a second project and say, well, I now want Trivi to be the scanner for this project. And then Trivi will scan your images. And if you have the same set of images, you can compare them and see which scanner works best based on your needs as an organization and as a user. 
this is phenomenal, right? We give users choice and we give them all the data, but ultimately they have to make the decision on, on what is the best scanner for them to use based on their scenarios, the type of application images and containers that they use, and the type of libraries that they use in those containers. Excellent. Uh, before we wrap this up, um, if what kind of roadmap you have for Harbor? Of course, it's an open source project, so there is no such thing as when the 3.0 release is coming out. But when we look at 2020, what are the major challenges that you want to address? What are the problems you want to solve? And how? What does the basic roadmap looks like? Yeah, absolutely. I think that you know uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do as a maintainer team for Harbor is to kind of create some themes around the releases, kind of put a, a, a blueprint down in terms of what is it that we're trying to achieve, and then identify the features that make sense in that theme. And we're not kind of, we're not coming up with this from a vacuum, like we're talking to users, we're talking to other companies, where we have Kubicon events in the past where we had presentations and, and individuals came to us asking us uh, a set of questions. We have existing users that give us feedback. Um, when we gather all of that, one of the things that we came up with as the next theme for our release is what we call image distribution. So we have three key features that we're trying to tackle into that area. The first one is how can Harbor act as a proxy cache to enable organizations that are either um, deploying Kubernetes environments at the edge and they want a local Harbor instance to proxy or mirror images from the mothership, like your main data center, and we're networking is at the premium. Uh, maybe some of the Kubernetes nodes are not even connected to the network and they want to be able to pull images from Harbor and then Harbor pulls the images from the upstream data center. Very, very important feature. Continuing down the path of image distribution, we're integrating Harbor with both Dragonfly by Alibaba and Project Kraken by Uber to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer distribution mechanisms for your container images. So how can we efficiently distribute images at the edge, in multiple data centers, in branch offices with, uh, with that don't have a good network or thick network pipe between them? And how can Harbor make sure that the right images land at the right place? Big, big features that we're trying to work with the community. And obviously, we're not doing this alone. We're working with both Kraken and the Dragonfly communities to achieve that. And last, uh, the next feature that we have is what we call garbage collection without downtime. Traditionally, if you do garbage collection, and this is kind of the process where you get to reclaim some of the files and layers of, of basically container images that are no longer in use. Think of an organization that pushes and pulls thousands of images every day. They retag them, they create new versions. Sometimes you end up with layers that are no longer used. In order for those layers to be reclaimed at the storage and, and by the system, the registry needs to be locked down, as in nobody can be pulling or pushing images to it. In Harbor 2.0, we actually made a significant advancement where we track all the layers and the metadata of images in our database rather than depending on another tool or product to do it. So now this actually paves the road so that in the future, we could actually do garbage collection with zero downtime, where Harbor can identify all the layers that are no longer in use, go reclaim them, and then that will have zero adverse impact or downtime to the users that are pushing and pulling content. Huge, huge features, and that's that's the things that we're working on in the future. Awesome. Thank you, Michael, for, for explaining things in detail and uh, talking about Harbor. I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity.